Bankless Nation, I got one last alpha leak for you. One last interview from DevCon 6. That'll conclude the DevCon 6 experience. I hope you've enjoyed these interviews thus far. I hope it's made you feel like you were on the ground at DevCon 6 itself and you didn't miss a beat. There was so many more talks, so many more things to explore. They're all in the newsletter on Bankless about the DevCon 6 experience. This last one is about Push Protocol, which is also a sponsor of Bankless. So there's a disclaimer. Uh, this is talking with the co-founder of Push, Harsh, who has been with Push since day one. And they've recently rebranded to Push from EPNS, Ethereum Push Notification Service, now just called Push, much better name. And if Push, of course, pushes notifications to you about what's going on in Web3, about what's going on in the metaverse, into your phone, just like all your other notifications. Uh, and so there's probably a link in the show notes for you to get started if that tr intrigues you. But to learn more, just go ahead and listen to this conversation with Harsh from Push right after we talk to some of these fantastic sponsors that make this show possible. TruFi is leading DeFi into the future of on-chain, uncollateralized loans, opening up DeFi to the $8 trillion global credit market. Whether you want higher yields on your lending or you're a fund manager who just wants access to global liquidity and the cost savings of DeFi, TruFi is here for you. But if you're going to use TruFi, use it through the Brave browser, the user-first browser for the Web3 age. The Brave browser keeps your digital footprint small, keeping you in the driver's seat while also being a powerful battle station for Web3, letting you access your crypto through its native wallet, view your NFTs, and keep up to date with your Web3 communities. Another thing you can use through Brave is, of course, Arbitrum. And you all, of course, have heard about Arbitrum, but the Arbitrum ecosystem is really heating up. With a recent launch of Arbitrum Nova, Arbitrum has entered the world of multi-chain layer twos. And with a recent acquisition of Prismatic Labs, Arbitrum firepower is bigger than ever. Arbitrum Nitro shipped last month and has made Arbitrum faster and cheaper than ever before. So make sure that you can experience what Arbitrum has to offer before it's too late. But maybe you're a developer who hates the constraints of the EVM. So check out the Fuel VM from the Fuel Network, which has opened up the world of parallel transaction execution, breaking Fuel Network free from EVM baggage. With Fuel, you can leverage the Rust tooling ecosystem to build stronger apps, all while keeping Ethereum level security. Also pushing the frontier of Web3 development is the Sequence Wallet from Horizon. Sequence is the all-in-one developer platform you need to build Web3 games and applications. For users, Sequence is a smart wallet and perhaps the most intuitive wallet in all of Web3. But for developers, it's a plug and play platform for all Web3 apps and games. Check out Sequence, which is already powering some of the best Web3 games out there. And lastly, Deso is a decentralized social platform built from the ground up to disrupt the social media industry. Disrupting social media takes a lot of data and Deso's infinite state applications can finally store and index large amounts of content and data fully on-chain. With multiple crypto-native monetization mechanisms for both developers and creators, Deso wants to usher in a new relationship with our social applications. Check them out at Deso.com. And now, onto the show. And we are back at DevCon 6 in Bogota. And now I'm speaking with Harsh from what was formerly called EPNS, but now called Push, which fits into my brain a lot better. Harsh, welcome to Bankless. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. And yeah, now we have Push Protocol. Uh, EPNS was when we started uh, uh, during Hackman 2020, but now we are doing so much more, and so it was better to call ourselves Push. Besides that, some people pointed out like EPNS sounds a little different to <laughs> someone, <laughs> yes, yeah. so Push may be a uh, better rebrand. And Push, of course, actually relates to the product that you are building, but uh, for the bankless listeners and the people out there that don't know what Push is, give us a download. What's Push? Got it. So, Push is basically the communication stack of Web3. Uh, what we started building was uh, first push notifications for Web3. So, if you just observe, like when even when we are talking on WhatsApp, we are not really talking on WhatsApp as much as we are talking via notification on WhatsApp. And when we get up in the morning, we probably look at our phone and we have all the notifications from email to banking alerts to PayPal Venmo to any social thing we are doing, to any gaming that we are doing and so on. That was all Web2, like Web2 is driven by notifications, right? Uh, but when you, when you came to Web3, uh, this driven by notification was absent. Uh, there was no way for you to identify uh, or for you to communicate with a Web3 wallet address, which is your username in Web3. And that was the genesis of Bush, uh, which basically meant that it's a decentralized communication protocol using which any DAB, any smart contract, any backend 
They can send communications, including notifications, and now chat as well, which are now directly tied to our wallet address. Uh, this is done through an open network like Ethereum, uh, which makes sure that uh, any crypto wallet can just tap into a user wallet address and can show them the communication out. Uh, it's multi-chain and platform agnostic as well. And the things that it solves now is like, for example, DeFi. So whenever you loan liquidates, before your loan can liquidate, now protocols can send alerts directly targeted to the wallet address and say, hey, your loan might be liquidated, or on-chain governance or off-chain governance. Uh, so whenever a governance proposal comes, now people can be notified or the wallet address can be notified so they can go out and vote. Metaverse, like it solves the problem of communication. NFT, it solves the problem of retargeting or even bidding, like if you're bidding for an NFT or you want to negotiate. So that was push notifications was all about and hence Ethereum push notification service. But because we uh, we now launched on Polygon and we are entering our Web3 journey, that Ethereum thing then makes sense because we are evolving uh, after Ethereum to all the other errors and to even other non-Ethereum chains as well. So we dropped the Ethereum part out, then uh, the service didn't make sense because this is a protocol like block, both push notification and the push chat that we launched. So we had to drop the service out. Then the push notification is not the only thing we are doing. Uh, therefore, we had to drop the notification out. So yeah. <laughs> just to make push, and that's what we have. <laughs> I love the story. I love the story. That's great. And just to re-articulate the thesis as to the, the, the model here is that most of the activity when we're looking at our devices are notifications. Yes. Uh, but Ethereum doesn't have a way of communicating to us on our devices. This just doesn't really work. Yes. Uh, and so the idea is like when uh, like, uh, your SMS text messages or Instagram or emails all show up as a push notification, yes. which is a Web2 thing yes. uh, currently. Uh, and the idea here is that if we want all of these events on Ethereum, all a transaction is, is an event anyways, uh, all these events on Ethereum to look and behave the way that they that we're already used to our notifications looking and behaving. We need them to show up next to our SNMS text messages or our Instagram messages or whatever. Exactly, exactly. So that's, that's the idea. Like for us to get to 1 billion developers, the seamlessness of Web2 or the uh, UX of Web2 needs to be put in Web3. So Web3 usernames are wallet apps. Like Twitter username, are your Twitter username, WhatsApp username is your mobile phone. And they had notifications because, you know, they had that intra built in. But for Web3 usernames, which are wallet address, mm -hmm. this intra was not built in. And therefore, push notifications made a lot of sense. There was, of course, a higher underlying, like once you build push notifications out, now you can build the next WhatsApp out or Discord out. So that's why we launched Push Chat as well during DevCon. Uh, the idea being now, when you're talking to a wallet, you have notifications just like you have notifications for your WhatsApp or Twitter or Telegram. So now you can go back and talk to each other. So that's how we are trying to bridge the gap of UX for Web2 and Web3. Because what we feel is like communication is the sole way by which you can get adoption going. Uh, of course, we are not only on Ethereum. Like uh, we launched on Polygon as well, and we are going to launch on several other L2s as well. Uh, even the uh, L2 that is the only serious blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke for optimism, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, and then we are going to go beyond Ethereum as well. So we are going to launch on, let's say, Solana or uh, Bitcoin. Sure. The idea being that a Web3 user can communicate seamlessly uh, through any chain, uh, through any protocol, uh, or through any service. Uh, using the wallet that they have, they don't have to move anywhere else. And uh, a big focus on many of the core Ethereum people, Vitalik mainly and, and many others like him, are focused on the non-financial use cases of the blockchain, which we don't really have too much access to on the Ethereum layer one because of high gas fees. The only thing that you can really do in an era of high gas fees is financial stuff. But uh, push fits into the financial stuff just to notify you of DeFi events. But I'm assuming that's a very small total overall market for what could be notifications on Ethereum. And I think as we get to uh, the, the layer twos with super cheap gas fees, uh, and uh, of course at, uh, here at DEF CON we've seen three announcements from the ZK rollups ecosystem about what test nets or on the layer two or layer three. 
So there's, there's this era of low fee things coming to Ethereum. And all of a sudden I would expect that the surface area for notifications coming out of push would also be increasingly large. Is this something that you guys are thinking about ahead with all of these uh, growth and adoptions of very low fee blockchains and all the, the potential notifications that we might need out of the result of this? Like, what are you thinking about this? Uh, yes, so dream? exactly. So we just recently announced uh, our uh, integration with Lens. Uh, because, you know, social network is going to come on box. Uh, and social network cannot survive with them without communication and without modifications. And that's, that's the thing, like, that's how far we are thinking, like, metaverse, we are talking of metaverse. So we need to have a way by which wallets can communicate, they can chat, they can give you call, they can do notifications. And that's what we are thinking. So you're exactly right, right? Like, even the transactions, like, when we used to send ourselves Ethereum, we weren't able to be notified. So we had to see the wallet and at times someone would have sent us something. Unfortunate times, it would have, someone would have had and would have gone. But we never uh, were notified of it. So that, that, that was one basic utility that got solved. And then the dApps and uh, the social apps and the metaverse and the NFT came. It came. And uh, of course, all of these, they require notifications, all of these, they require communication. So yeah, that's, that's where we are headed. Like the vision is Web3 native communication there, uh, just like how Apple has the Web2 uh, communication there. That's what pushes for them to Yeah, I think you can totally just imagine DeFi events, they're not supposed to happen. You don't want a push notification by the DeFi event, usually, probably not. Um, but when we get into the world of the metaverse and like Web3 gaming, that's different kind of events. That's like social events, that's like cultural events, that's things that are happening in a game that you might be interested in. And the landscape, I'm sure, just opens up uh, far broadly to all of these different use cases that we know are on the horizon, just aren't here yet. Um, and so I want to ask you, how does this change what a wallet is? Uh, previously, people think a wallet is like where you can store all of your Ether and your tokens and your NFTs. But now with something like Push, it changes it a little bit? Like, yes. how does it change what a wallet is to a user? Yes. yes. So, first of all, I mean for DeFi also, like notifications are very important. Uh, not when your loan is liquidated, right. that's just sad. But before your loan is liquidated, now you can be notified. So, if you're working with IDX, uh, Harvey, and a lot of other protocols uh, to ensure that notifications are sent before you are liquidated now. So DeFi also plays a very huge, huge uh, product market fit. Uh, coming back to wallets, so yeah, if you just think about it, like we don't have apps like in Web2. So uh, like for example, we log into Facebook or we log into Twitter and they control all our data and they send us notifications and everything because there's a single username for each of them. But when you come to Web3, this is your shared username. You use the same wallet on Uniswap, same wallet on Lens, and same wallet on anything that you do, even Decentraland or OpenSea. It's the same wallet. And therefore, this wallet now becomes your identity. Uh, not crypto wallets front end, but the wallet that you own, that becomes your identity. It becomes a way, it becomes a username of sorts which has everything attached to it, like communication, uh, your reputation, uh, the way you have interacted in the past, all of it is actually attached to your wallet. And I think that's where we are headed. Uh, identity, reputation, privacy, and communication. So I, I do think that's that's where we are going. Like one very funny thing I did on Shelling Point, like we were unmeeting push chat, uh, and that was inspired by optimism presentation. So I just went on CPT3 and I just asked like, what are the next steps for uh, blockchain or where blockchain is headed? So, uh, and I le I'm legit telling you this, like they said that the three main key points which they see in blockchain are metaverse, uh, communication, and uh, even machine learning and uh, making sure that that machine learning can somehow uh, derive your identity, that you are real, or, uh, without linking it to your real identity. So I'm glad that uh, the AI thinks that we are solving one of the problems of the future. Sure, sure. And so what actually is Push though? Is it an app on your phone? Like how, how does one interface with it? Got it. So Push is a protocol 
uh, in essence, it's a Lego building block yeah. for other dApps or other protocols or other smart contracts who want to notify their users. Sure. So just like how Apple provided this notification platform and WhatsApp provided this chat block platform, uh, wherein other services can come and utilize it, which basically fills that gap for Web3. So if you're a protocol, you want to send notifications to your user, you use or you integrate push protocol into it. So if you're and then the user also has to like sign up for to receive the notifications, right? Yes, yeah. yes. So the user signs uh, or opts in uh, to receive notifications from a protocol that can be done from their front end or they can come to our discovery app and just do an opt-in. Uh, it's a gasless process. Uh, so users, they don't have to pay any gas fee, whatever, again, the web model. So where do users actually go get their notifications? Like, how does it show up on my phone? Got it. So because this is an open network, any crypto wallet can just go ahead and ah. integrate it. Okay, um, so you are not an app. You are a service that any iOS app that's a wallet could hook into. Yes, we, we are basically a protocol. Uh, we do provide like our mobile app or Chrome extension that's built on our protocol. But that can be done by any crypto wallet. Uh, we did announce uh, our first uh, integration with Polygon Wallet. So Polygon Wallet will be basically interfacing with push protocol and showing all those notifications out. And we are talking to several other wallets because now I think uh, we need to start that uh, crypto wallet uh, integration journey. Sure. What uh, notifications do you get from push? Oh yeah. So. My favorite one is actually uh, from Coindesk. Mm -hmm. uh, we they are also our launch partners, so we get notifications of theirs. Uh, then ENS, like uh, I don't want to lose my ENS domain, so now whenever the domain expires, uh, uh, there's a notification which uh, uh, helps me a lot. It actually helped me because my ENS was expired. <laughs> uh, then, uh, then yeah, after ENS. Uh, I do use uh, uh, something called gas tracker, but I think now the utility is going down for that channel because gases are <laughs> kind of now optimized or not that high. Uh, so yeah, those those three are my go-to channels. I usually just hop onto all the channels that are getting me. Uh, Uniswap is also one of my favorite one because uh, uh, I do have a healthy pool. Mm -hmm. So whenever the fee falls out of frames, I'm getting notified. So that's also cool as well. Right, right. And just to unpack that a little bit, Uniswap V3, you can have concentrated liquidity and push can tell you when the price of the Uniswap pool has gone in or out of that, that liquidity pool to tell you you're making money or you're not making money. Yes, yes. yes. Actually, Uniswap tells because the app defines what notification they want to send. But yeah, that's a and so this is like a developer platform, so anyone can come and customize their own kind of NF, uh, uh, push notifications, right? They can just you know, create, build a, build, a, build a notification service. Yes, right? yes. They can do it either directly from their smart contract or from backend. Mm -hmm. they, uh, what, what we are is a communication middleware. So we just enable whatever they want to send to wallets. We just validate and enable it to prove over. Well, the, the thing that's come to mind is that uh, we know that these Web2 apps like compete for our attention with push notifications. And so now we've actually given our Web3 apps that same that same competitive advantage of like, hey, pay attention to me. Like something's happening. Exactly. Uh, and so like now we can direct some of our attention from Web2 to Web3 a little bit more uh, organically for better or worse to engage into the uh, attention economy. Exactly, exactly. So. The way we do it, like that's why we built the opt-in mm -hmm. because we don't want notification. Notifications are very useful and they can be spammy as well. So that's why we said that a wallet address has to tap on opt-in uh, before getting those notifications. Otherwise, it just lands on your spam box and the like the Twitter inputs. Well, Harsh, congratulations on rebrand. I'm excited to see all of these notifications coming out into the world of Web3. Thanks, thanks, Dan, David, for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah.